That's usually where I put it, but... Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Welcome to this talk. Uh, I've added this little disclaimer for desktop, because actually creating cross-platform applications is relatively easy, um, if it's web or something like that. So I've added that little disclaimer. Um, so I think looking uh, through some of the other talks in this track, including the last one, the dream of kind of writing code once and then multi-using it, multi-purposing it in different applications is nothing new, nothing new at all. Uh, yeah, the talk previously covered a language that, or a framework that you can use for that. Uh, this is kind of the first instance I've found of this quote, but I don't think it's new, and in fact 1995 even seems too recent to me. But of course, I guess, from the same company, one of the first sort of big attempts at this kind of write once, run mostly everywhere, with little adaption, um, was Java, and still is, really. Um, and also, of course, languages like Python and many others. I mean, it's not a new concept. And then again, frameworks. Uh, these are just one. There's also things like Xamarin, uh, Flash, Flex, B4J, Zojo, many others come and gone. But I guess kind of the, the thing with a lot of them is they always required you to learn something new. So maybe a new type of language, maybe some new variants on the language, some new paradigms. They were never completely um, easy to get started with. Uh, you had to sort of learn something first. But it's always been a dream to accomplish, basically I guess because a lot of developers are kind of a bit lazy and we'd rather focus on something else. Um, and kind of, I guess, where I sort of start this a little bit is Electron to me. I'll explain what it is soon, but you probably know already. But to me, it seemed a little similar to Apache Cordova. Or I actually encountered Apache Cordova when it was still Nitrobe PhoneGap, um, which ages me slightly. Uh, and it was the same principle. Write HTML, JavaScript, run it on multiple platforms in the same sort of way. Have like some native wrappers that fill in the missing pieces, and the code that you write once can run on multiple platforms. It, was a similar, it still is a similar principle, although on mobile, starting to become less relevant, actually. But um, it was kind of a similar principle, and I would probably argue it was an inspiration for Electron as well, I guess, because it does a very similar thing. So, enter Electron. What is Electron? I've alluded to already. It's a framework for writing um, JavaScript, CSS, HTML if you need it, to make cross-platform desktop applications. Um, it has some other similar rivals, in inverted commas, like NJWS, but for some reason, Electron has just sort of become much more popular and much more widespread. It could be because it's uh, created by GitHub, and lots of people know GitHub. It could be the people who decided to use it. It could be that the level of integration with the native platforms is better. I'm not really sure. I'm not going to cast any kind of judgment on that. But I think we could argue that it is certainly much more popular than the other alternatives. So you've probably used it without even realizing. Um, if you've used any of these applications, plus many others, you're using Electron. Slack is always controversial. Some people say it is, some people say it isn't. They sometimes say it is, they sometimes say it isn't. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> it's hard to say exactly. Uh, I guess my first interaction with Electron was Atom. Uh, I really love Atom. I use it almost all the time. Um, and to be honest with you, I probably know much more about Atom than I know about Electron, actually. <laughs> this will be a moderately introductory talk to Electron. I think I actually know much more about Atom. Um, so, it is from GitHub. Um, JavaScript is a desktop application. Version 1.5 was released last week, and it is moving quite quickly. Um, in fact, when I first did this talk, a version of this talk last August, it had only just got to version 1, I think. So in a few months, it's, it's iterating quite quickly at the moment and improving quite a lot. And we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. So as you would sort of expect, being a JavaScript framework, installing is pretty straightforward. Um, npm install, uh, or if you're a Mac user, cask room, 
um, which, I don't know, just slightly different way of installing it to end up with pretty much the same thing. Um, and you end up kind of with a command line tool, but also a, I will show you this actually. You also end up with um, a binary here as well that you can actually drag and drop your code onto to run it whilst you're testing mostly. <laughs> you can also kind of use this to um, package your applications at the end as well. And much as it's a cross-platform tool, then actually most of the options are applicable to every platform that you develop on as well. So that's kind of what happens when you open it. So your screenshot is slightly out of date. <laughs> um, and then if you're a CLI user, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Just run the command. Um, I'll show you a demo application, and then I'm going to kind of show what it does. So I have a very simple application here. This is running in Atom. We're creating an electron application in Atom. This is getting very matrix. <laughs> um, so it comprises a couple of basic different things. A package JSON file with dependencies. Unsurprisingly, one of the main dependencies is Electron. Um, a main JavaScript file that contains your code, and then kind of where all the magic happens in this app folder. Um, so I'm just going to run this first, and we'll see what it does. It's very, very interesting. A Wi-Fi allowing. There we go. It loads the Marvel Comics <laughs> API, which is a terrible API to use, but really fun to demonstrate. <laughs> and actually, if I didn't have Do Not Disturb on, you'll also see that I got a notification as well. So I got a system notification as well when everything loaded. This is a web application, but as far as we can see, actually, I have left developer tools on. Um, so you can see it is effectively just Chrome-ish application there. And that's pretty much it. Nothing particularly interesting in this application. We also have the default icon. Can't quite see, but down here. Um, so just to break down those files a little bit, um, the main JS file, which we'll have a quick look at in a minute, starts the application and creates the browser window to render the HTML and sets up kind of the basics of the native bindings. And the index.html is the web page that is rendered by default. Um, so the main file is probably the, oops, the most interesting one. Um, requiring setting up the application window and the browser loading the uh, default file. I haven't really changed anything from the default application that you create here. Um, you can see there's a little bit of custom code for Mac OS because um, when you close the final window in a Mac application, you want to quit the application. I mean, you could actually uncomment that, but the whole, F the whole point is making it feel as native as possible on each platform. But really, that's the only platform-specific <laughs> thing there. Uh, and also in here is where you can add things like turning on um, the turning the developer tools on and off, or setting up actions that can happen in menus, or the dock icon, or start icon, or the I'm not sure what the launcher, whatever it's called in various Linux distributions, the kind of interactions you can make with the application from the operating system. And that's pretty much it. If you've done any JavaScript, it's all pretty simple so far. And this is kind of almost a disappointing thing with an Electron talk, is it's actually really simple. There's not actually much to it. <laughs> it's just JavaScript once you get past that file. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Dumb thing there. There we go, yeah. <laughs> we already had a look at that. Sort of jump straight into the code instead of the presentation. So, 
great. That's during development, but how do we get it to actually look like a, an application at the end of it all? This is called packaging it. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. The first step you do is create an ASAR archive, which is actually um, basically making it not look like it's just JavaScript. Um, and I'll show you how this works in a minute, but that's what I can't exactly remember what it stands for, but that's what you create first. Uh, it copies the files that are needed, rename and distribute it, and these are kind of the steps you can go through manually, or my preferred option is to use one of the third-party tools, uh, and there's two of them that kind of do all this for you. And up now comes a pretty uh, lengthy looking command. So this is another NPM module that it's not, it's not necessarily official from the Electron team, but it's highly recommended. Yeah. I have some trouble with the screen on the camera. <laughs> now it's got worse. Oh, there we go, right. Okay. Um, so here we set the location of the code, we give the application a name, we set the platforms and the architecture, and you can just do all, and it will package for 32-64-bit Linux, 32-64-bit Windows, 32-64-bit Mac, if there are any 32-bit Macs anymore, I'm not sure. Uh, or you can do all. We can set whether we want the ASAR archive or not. We can prune some of the NPM dependencies where it goes. We're just saying overwrite it if it's there. Uh, most importantly, an icon file. And this is probably where it gets the hardest for cross-platform because every uh, desktop OS has a slightly different format for their icons. So this is specific to Mac, but you kind of have to have uh, something for each one to make it look the most native thing. So I'm going to run this and show you what happens. And everything's vanished up the top there, but that's okay. Okay. So fortunately I have auto-completing there. Don't have to type that all again. Um, hopefully this is going to be fine. It takes a little bit of time, not too long. In the older versions of this, you had to specify the Electron version as well. You can still do that if you want, but you don't have to anymore. It will now just find the most appropriate version as well for you. And here is the final output there. Looks pretty authentic. Um, I am using copyrighted material here. <laughs> and again, it will look kind of the same. There was a notification again, which is you can't actually see because everything seems to have gone up the top. Um, but you, you can't see my menu bar, but now all I have is a quit option. <laughs> so maybe let's just try that one more time. There we go. Yeah. It's a little bit cut off, but you can see I don't have the toggle developer tools or anything like that. And there's no way of I'm right clicking, I'm control clicking, I can't get anything now. Now it looks like a proper, proper application as far as everyone is concerned. So, um, what are some of the things you can do? you can get notifications. We saw that. It's using kind of HTML5 notifications that get routed through to the notification system of the operating system. I have tested this on Mac, on Windows, and on three varieties of Linux, and they all go where you expect, which is actually quite cool, especially on Linux, because notifications can be quite inconsistent. Um, and they all they go in the right place, which is good. <laughs> so, um, you get things like, you can get things like recent documents, uh, on the Mac OS, that can be by right-clicking on the dock icon. On Windows and Linux, I think the same. Uh, you can create your own custom menus. Uh, this includes, as I say, like a dock. And um, in Windows, also, you can add things like uh, you can right-click on a folder in Windows and say, open in an application. 
So setting up those associations and things like that. Um, also, presented file is the uh, something you can do in macOS where you click the top document icon and it will show you the folder structure of where the file is. That also works, things like that. Uh, you can create preferences and all sorts of things. And the one thing I will actually say, since I kind of lasted this presentation and have been using um, Windows and Linux a bit more at work, the it, as with a lot of kind of JavaScript frameworks, often the Mac support was better than anything else and the Windows and Linux lagged behind a bit, and the recent updates have actually made that a lot better. Um, some of the slowness, some of the rendering issues that used to be in some uh, earlier versions actually are a lot better now. Um, so they've been focusing a lot more on making it truly cross-platform, not cross-platform, but better on one. <laughs> so, so that's quite nice. Uh, negatives. Okay, application size is one. I'm actually going to show you something interesting here. So, and you can do equivalent on um, every other uh, operating system. You can see for a relatively simple application, 110 megabytes. If I crack that open, most of it is, where is it? <coughs> I've lost it. Where is it? Most of it is that file. The Electron Framework, 107 megabytes of that 110 is the helper. <laughs> so, um, when I last did this presentation, it was 175 megabytes. So it's actually got a lot better. <laughs> and these are desktop applications, not mobile. So it's a compromise. There's compromises everywhere. This is the thing that's doing a lot of that magic. And I don't have the actual numbers for other operating systems. Um, but it will add a fair bit of overhead there, but that's, that's, it's not too bad, but yeah, like 99, 95% of the application is this one framework file, so that's one problem. <laughs> um, CPU memory performance, again, used to be a lot worse. If you've used Slack, then Slack used to traditionally be uh, pretty poor at especially network and CPU overhead. Um, that again has got a lot better with recent Slack versions and recent Electron versions. And I would actually argue that a lot of the reasons that Slack especially is so unperformant is you have about 15 channels with all with requests open. So that's of course going to cause quite a lot of overhead. Um, but even with Atom, for example, on uh, Windows and Linux, still opening takes a fair bit of time to open. I mean, if we think about how long it takes to open compared to applications from five years ago. Really, it's nothing, but it is still a little slow to get started. And I still get some rendering issues every now and then, things like that. But it's getting better. Um, of course, one of the main negatives is it's still not native. <laughs> it, it does a pretty good job, but it isn't. So you do lose a lot of possibilities for uh, optimization and APIs that are available in the kind of proper development frameworks that aren't available. But again, a lot of those are being patched up quite quickly. And there are some platform inconsistencies, as I already said. Again, getting better, but still there. But I guess you offset that with the fact that JavaScript is relatively easy to get started with. A lot of people know how to write it. Um, and you can effectively write some reasonably complicated applications, like for example, Nylas, the mail application, is a fully featured email client. Atom is a fully featured text editor. You know, pretty good applications. Unless you're writing a new office suite or something, it will cover a lot of use cases uh, that you might have. So you can offset some of those performance issues with the time saving. And I think the other thing is Electron has kind of become the victim of its own success. It has become so popular that every person and their dog is now writing applications that are basically just websites in wrappers, and you get a lot of bad applications. <laughs> so, but that's kind of another issue, really. That's a little bit the problem. I love things that lower the barrier to entry, but of course, it allows more stuff to be made as well, which may be inconsistent. But I suggest you give it a go. Um, some of the Getting Started guides are a little little hard to follow, I would say. I'm a documentation person, so, so it's kind of the thing I always keep an eye out for. Um, but 
give it a go and you can make um, applications for, for everybody relatively easily. Uh, that's me. I, um, it's actually slightly out of date. I'm actually a technical writer for a company in Berlin. And if you're interested in documentation, I'm doing another talk at uh, 4.20, <laughs> so very soon, um, on automating documentation. No one likes to write it. How can you get more of it to be written for you? Um, and if you like my chinchillas, you can go to my website and buy t-shirts, or you can download the SVGs and do what you like with them. <laughs> so, uh, but thanks very much. Any questions? I have uh, a few. OK. Um, does it support uh, PHP in any way? Um, Generating HTML with the HTML? <laughs> the question, please, for oh, sorry. So the question was, can you use PHP or, I guess, other languages behind the scenes to kind of generate? Um, I mean, I would say, in theory, yes. But the main process is still a node process. Okay. Um, and you would have to somehow figure out how to bundle those dependencies as well. Okay. That would probably be the main. So that um, uh, one big file you were talking about, it would also then include the PHP part? Yeah, and I don't know how that would, you would, you know, the user would end up having a lot of running processes that they're not necessarily aware of as well. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's the only thing <laughs> to bear in mind. Oh, okay. It's a, an interesting idea. I kind of know why you'd want to do it, but yeah. <laughs> like web development without PHP sounds kind of alien to me, but. Uh. Yeah, Node does a lot. <laughs> okay. I have. Uh, sorry. I think the guy at the back was just there slightly earlier. Yes, uh, you showed a framework file which was quite big. Yeah. Is there a possibility to use this in a generic way so multiple applications can yeah. use the same framework file? Um, so the question was, with the framework, can you can more than one application use it, or can you customize it in some way? Um, multiple applications accessing it, I'm not 100% sure. It probably depend on the operating system. But for example, uh, the Slack application, which um, is at least based around Electron, isn't as big. And it's reasonably complicated. So, oh. OK. It used to be smaller last time I looked. <laughs> I don't know, it used to be smaller last time I looked, but still that is smaller than it could be. So I think, and if you crack that open, it's slightly different inside. So they've done something to streamline it a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you could probably strip out the bits of the framework you're not using and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I th you, yeah, um, I come from, I've done a lot of work with phone gap. Yeah. One of the things about that is you, generally when you run a phone gap app, you can't really make a web deployable version of what you're working on. It is a phone gap app, and that's what it is. Um, is Electron kind of like that in the same way, or can you write, say like your main .js yeah. app, can you make that like, can you make Electron like a progressive enhancement? Okay. So the code base is kind of... Yeah. I'm going to say yes and no, because based on examples I've seen. So for example, oh sorry. So the question was around um, like progressive application development. Can I make a website version that is basically the same as a desktop version, etc.? Whereas with PhoneGap, you couldn't really do that. So for example, if you look at Slack in the browser and Slack on the desktop, it looks pretty much the same. Um, but I have hung around in, I wondered the same thing with Atom. I thought, hey, could you make Atom on the web? And the forum post there said no. So, <laughs> so it depends what you're doing. But that's yeah. the point, depends what you're doing. Yeah. You're doing file system access and yeah. browsers won't give you Yeah. Access. So in theory, yes. Because I'm pretty case. sure Slack is basically the same. There's a few extra preferences you get in the desktop, and they do vary per platform, like what you want to do and things like that. But I would pretty strongly say yes, and that's kind of the point of it as okay, well. Um, OK, and then over here. The yep. size of the bundle is, yep. that, is, is that largely due to the fact that each time you, at every package, you know, electron package you install to the second version, Chromium is getting installed. Like yeah. And is that a version number that you're, you're like aware of? So, so one of the attractions for electron for me is that I can say, OK, I know exactly what the browser target is. Whereas on the, on the web, I don't get that. I have no idea yeah. what this is going to get uh, used. Yeah. So the question was, can you 
specify the Chrome version because actually then effectively you have more control than you do on the web. Uh, again, I haven't tried it, but I have seen discussions around that and I don't see why you couldn't. I think would be my my encouraging answer to go and look. <laughs> so, so, yep. um, can you talk a bit about the, sort of the, the magic that Electron does maybe when it comes to, to file access, maybe down links to access or no? Um, I know one of the, the, the weird things we were trying to, to get around with was sort of exposing files and sort of interfaces to the app from the native part. So we had different solutions, but maybe like Electron can access. Yeah. Um, so the question was about file access, and so um, as far as I'm aware, because using Atom, for example, I, I have not noticed any restrictions. Um, I get recent documents system-wide. I can access all the things I would expect to have in my Mac OS that I can do with native applications, I can do. So for whatever magic is happening, it's giving me full access. Um, how exactly that works, I'm not 100% sure, but um, you do get full access. Yeah. Say it again, sorry? Through not native models. Through not native models? Yes. Yeah. You can have uh, access to libraries. Ah, okay. So you're saying certain system wide libraries? Yeah. Okay. Maybe because you can, uh, for example, services, which is a sort of Mac system library, you can access. So some you can, some you can't. Um, and it's probably just because no one's written the, the bindings yet. Not because it's impossible, no it has it I guess, but yeah. Any, okay. Can you execute system commands as an application? Yeah, oh well, mm. okay. so the question was can you access, can you execute system commands? Um, I'm going to say yes, because in Atom you can. <laughs> so in Atom you can actually edit the init script to execute system commands. So, yeah, so I would say yes. <laughs> so, and another question, yeah? Yes. Um, oh, yeah. You, said, you said in the beginning that uh, the code versions uh, evolve quite quickly. Yeah. Um, how does that affect your existing code? Is uh, like uh, a port from uh, 1.3 to 1.4, is that going to break your code by definition or is everything guaranteed to still work in the next version? So the question was about breaking changes between versions. Um, I'm not 100% sure about breaking changes, but for example, um, I think 1.3, 1.4, for example, fixed a lot of problems with rendering on high resolution screens. So it's often they seem to be mostly introducing new features that you can take that you have to take advantage of, as opposed to breaking old ones. Probably because it's still quite new, but I'm sure at some point there will be they will start breaking things. <laughs> at the moment, I think it's mostly just improving, improving, and probably not taking much out. But I'm sure at some point something will start breaking. But again, it's npm, so you can specify the the version. So maybe time for one more. Yep. I was wondering about uh, any, any security issues that could be exposed. Did you, uh, for example, uh, in the web, we have always the, the danger of accessor attacks, injecting, scripting in, in the website? Yeah. As, as a, um, this library can access all the files in your system, if it, there is any measures uh, to, to mitigate that, like the scripting, yeah. the, scripting the connection that so the, the question was about security. Um, to be honest with you, I don't have an answer. Uh, I feel like that would be a very obvious question that everyone would have had. So I feel like there's some kind of sandboxing going on. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I would say check the documentation because it seems too obvious not to have thought about it. <laughs> In some way, shape or form. Although it's probably going to still be a little less secure than, uh, well, badly coded applications are still going to, no matter native or not. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But I mean, probably the most dangerous thing immediately is just taking over your system a bit from performance. But I would say check the documentation. I'm pretty sure there's going to be something covering that. But um, thanks very much. As I say, Uh, electronjs.com